This video is about the Supermicro Super Server SYS E300-8D or 9D. 9D refers to the ZND2100 series CPU. The 8D was the ZND1500 series predecessor. All right, I already have a video that covers the various attributes of the motherboard and has a close look at all its components. You'll see I've got this open bay here and there's no motherboard, which is interesting. So you actually have more room and I even covered that. I was able to fit something kind of tall, like a Intel Optane drive because you got the extra height over there. All right, now this metal bracket in my unboxing video, I'm gonna actually snap it off at one point. So it's just a uh, metal, a little bit of force. You just pop it right off. And this video is now gonna show you what do you do with the parts? Well, this part, the bracket, came in the box, right? And you have a nice uh, airy backplate there with it and a screw. But here's the thing. This does not come with the server. Um, server's not been released. So let's uh, hope uh, that everything I'm saying here stands true with the shipping product. We don't really know yet until it starts shipping in uh, volume. But anyhow, it looks like it's the same chassis that's been used for uh, almost two years now. And if you buy this... Uh, RR1U-E8 and you put it in place, you now have a right angle way to get PCI cards in there because obviously with one, one U of height, you don't have a lot of room there. Now, there is a product by a company called Amfeltech here that does get the job done, meaning you can actually put that in here and get an M.2 card here. Sorry, storage device like a 960 Evo. You can get that situated with room to put the lid back on. But that's a third party product. It is just passive. It just passes through with these wire traces to the motherboard and VME signals. And it offsets it and just puts it over here, totally out of the way. And a fan blowing near it. So, well, that's good. But let's stick with Supermicro branded product here and show you that all we need to do is simply put these two screws in like that, the holes. And now we'll have a bracket that allows us to put a variety of half height, half length, PCIe cards in. Now, the interesting thing is there's a super micro card that has two M.2 slots on it. That's half height, half length. But bifurcation doesn't seem, seem to be supported, at least on this initial bias release. What that means is you can't see both drives. So with this, these uh, 18 lanes, you can't split it to two four by four lanes. Sorry, this is eight instead of 16. It's a half length, right? Um, so there we go. So we now have that's situated. Now, how do we put this thing back together? Well, you'll see there's a screw here that goes down to the motherboard there. So, um, you want to be careful. You're not jamming this into the wire traces in the motherboard right over here. All right, so be careful when putting this in. And the PCIe slot needs to be, you know, lined up as well. And then out the back, you've got this, um, you know, hanging PCIe bracket. So going very carefully here, you'll see I'm lining up the slot, going straight down to the motherboard, and that's it. Now I just need to put that hold down, motherboard hold down screw. It's one of the four corners of the motherboard, right? It's a multi-purpose screw there that now holds the PCIe bracket in place. Okay, got another screw up here, and again in my unboxing videos, I covered all of that, showing you that it came with a bag of screws. Okay, so now we have room to put half height, half length PCIe devices in here. How you to install them? Well, gotta unscrew this PCIe card down screw. So you'll see the metal bracket it comes with. We can easily take that out by tipping it out the back and removing it. Getting it out of the way. All right, so now let me see if I can just grab a nearby PCIe card and I'll go ahead and install that. And I actually have a full length one here. Uh, Let's see, full length and half length, I've got a variety. Here's one that is going to be simply too long. It's four way, but it requires a longer PCIe slot anyway, so that's a no go. We knew that already. But how about this one? Here's an Ampel Tech product that's got eight lanes. All right, looks like I've 
remove the back plate for whatever reason. So that means it's gonna kind of hang here and not have any support. So does that device fit though? Let's just see if we can get it in. So a little bit awkward here, kind of coming in from the bottom. Uh, and the answer is yes, fits in just fine. So yeah, you'd certainly want to use the back plate for that, but you get the idea that uh, you have clearance for a card all the way up to the length of this two by M.2 device, one on either side. So that's cool. Um, what else? Well, there's also the Super Micro card and other cards. I don't have all of them on hand, but you've now seen the basics of how you can install a card. Here's the third party card, not Super Micro. But yeah, it gets you one M.2, and that's all this motherboard seems to be able to support because that bifurcation thing I mentioned. And it's all of like $20. You'll see it's passive. So it just passively attaches M.2 to the PCIe lanes on the motherboard. And you'll see it's also shorter. All right, so if we want to install a card like this, and I believe Supermicro might make a one by adapter like this too, I'm not really sure. All right, the way we're going to do that is you run into trouble when you have the back plate on. You see that? So what you're supposed to do is install it before putting the bracket in. All right, so I made this mistake many times uh, in the past when I was working with this chassis design for the first time about two years ago, getting ready for VMworld with an engineering sample. Um, actually, no, I think that was a production ready sample. It was the first one in the world that I did a bit of an unboxing video of. Okay, so you take this out again and can set that screw aside. We're going to be reusing it in a moment. All right, it's safely out of the way there. All right, so now what you do is install the card like that. goes right into the tab there. And you can see it's situated correctly. Okay, now I can do the top screw. Go ahead and take care of that and situate it all back together here. So there you have it. Hopefully I've saved you a little bit of grief because you're likely to make the same mistakes I do uh, if you end up with a system like this. And you're gonna wanna watch my other videos and my full review of this potentially engineering sample pre-production unit. Not really sure yet. Okay, so I have the full detailed unboxing and I have another video I'm about to record it talks about the 84 watt included power supply. So there we have it. Uh, we've got a system with one NVMe device. So I'll be able to have a VMFS data store for ESXi 6.72C and to boot a VM off of that. And um, now I'm just gonna uh, you know, boot it up and do some testing of the power supply in the next video. So hopefully you got a good sense of exactly how the bracket works. Let's have a look here. Is that lined up? Yeah, looks like um, you get a slight angle there. So for this particular brand of card and the way it's situated, yeah, there's a slight angle. Um, and I haven't even done the front two screws, so I don't think there's much I can do about that. It's about one millimeter. When you put these two screws in, it really changes nothing about that slight angle we are seeing. Either way, card's not going anywhere. Thing is solid, and there's plenty of clearance. I've actually taken the uh, Oculink cable out of the way, so you can see better while I'm doing this video. If you have a look here, the other mistake you'll often make when you take it apart, you want that tab underneath. And now I'm ready to proceed with putting the server back together. So, hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. And consider subscribing to Tinker Try, IT at Home YouTube channel.